Today we are going to review one of my favorite Moab area trails, Seven Mile Rim. Seven Mile Rim is an 18 mile long loop that departs Highway 191 north of Moab and takes the explorer past some uranium mines, over to see some arches, around the rim of Seven Mile Canyon, between Monitor and Merrimack Butte, skirts Wipeout Hill after a famous off camber section, past Determination Towers, out Bartlett Wash, and back to the highway. In 2022, during the Easter Jeep Safari, it took us with a group of 17 vehicles just over eight hours to complete the trail, which included a lunch break, sightseeing, and spotting the large group over obstacles. My first time on this trail was during Jeep Safari 1993, and it has been one of my favorites ever since. Red Rock Four Wheelers, who puts on the Jeep Safari, rates this trail as a four, but recently has added the additional requirement of 33 inch or larger tires to keep the group moving. This trail was once a popular testing ground for bone stock off-road SUVs, but has since become torn up with time. Little too far, turn to, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's good, right there, straight, you're good. You're good, straight. Okay, now turn. While I feel Red Rock Four Wheeler's 33 inch tire rating is a bit conservative, is we had a WJ in our group on a pre-run with 32s and no lockers and heated just fine. I wouldn't recommend anything smaller for vehicles with more than a 100 inch wheelbase. Wheelbases under 100 inches will be just fine with 31 inch tires. Our Discovery 2 did just fine with them back in 2015. Love you, Mom. Love you too, bud. As of 2022, lockers aren't required. Modern traction control helps, however, and lockers do make everything effortless. Oh, you were there. That's it, right there. I recommend a good spotter, especially if you have a vehicle with smaller tires and a long wheelbase, and value your bodywork. Sliders are highly recommended, particularly on longer wheelbases, as we hit them a few times in our LX470. Okay, now come slowly, just a little bit so you can turn more. Yep. Now, turn, now turn left. Hard, hard, hard. Oh, actually, now turn right as you start to go so up that hill. So, we don't want your tires in this direction. Yes. So, when you start popping up, turn straight. Yep, okay. Once that starts coming up, turn right. Okay, turn, turn, turn. The first part of the trail is a narrow, loose shelf road that leads to the top of the mesa. It's not nearly as narrow as some of the infamous Colorado passes, such as Imogene, but can make newcomers a bit uneasy, as this clip from our 2015 trip shows. No, I wasn't close to the cliff. I had at least four feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Hobbit feet? The final stage to the mesa top is a gauntlet of rocky steps and ledges, called by one over the radio during the 2022 run as the Stairway to Seven, a term I quite like. This is what I like about the Jeep. I'm I don't even have my foot on the gas going up this step. So Brad, Tiana said that means you, you can ask for help. There is one particular step, in this case a descent, that you really need to get out of your vehicle and take a look at how you approach it. Don't cut too close to the driver's side. Keep a turn. Okay, now turn. 
Got some good air. Yes. At the top of Stairway to Seven, you are rewarded by your first of many amazing views from the top of the mesa. The next popular stop on the trail is a tall slick rock descent down to Uranium Arch. This is a great place for lunch. Continuing on, the trail follows the rim of Seven Mile Canyon as it guides you towards two imposing buttes, the Monitor and Merrimack named after the Civil War ironclads that fought in the famous Battle of Hampton Roads. Here is where you will get your first taste of sand. There is a long straightaway with sandy whoop-de-whoops leading to the buttes where you might be tempted to go fast. Don't. The last time I did was also the last time I had an unstrapped cooler. And I think I opened the cooler. <laughs> We're going to have what I tried to avoid, and that's cheese all stuck in the water. Between Monitor and Merrimack is also a great place to stop due to the flat sandstone base, but only if you are lucky enough to avoid the frequent gusts of wind. After the towering buttes is a slick rock descent to the intersection of many trails, including Wipeout Hill. drop down to this intersection, you'll have to traverse an off-camber slick rock portion that we always call Tippy Dome. The best line is really just to follow the black tire tracks of the vehicles that have gone before. A loose descent is the final obstacle. Since it is loose dirt, it changes annually, so plan your line carefully. Passenger hole, perfect. This is the way he wants to go, right? Nice and slow. That's it. Once down, you're at the final stage of the trail that follows and crosses Bartlett Wash. Once in the wash, the terrain can become smooth and encourage you to go fast. Again, don't. Just kick me, I'll move. <laughs> Trace's truck. She's going to get the whoops award for the day. A ranger in our group hit a puddle at speed that was deeper than expected and the vehicle tipped on its side. You'll eventually exit at a large parking lot close to Highway 191. This is a trailhead to see some dinosaur tracks if you are inclined to make the short hike. And thus ends Seven Mile Rim, one of my favorite trails in the Moab area for its varied terrain, mixed scenery, and mild to moderate obstacles. I just want to say I had a blast doing the Seven Mile Rim Trail out here at the Easter Jeep Safari. But what was missing was our primo director, Sierra, who did our last video for the Sand Hollow, which was a trail I was on for Milt's Mile Light. And I gotta say, I watched that video, I loved it, enjoyed every second, and Sierra, we missed you. Come back next time.